Well, good morning again, Life Words family and friends. So good to have you with us this morning. And I'm excited about kicking off this new series. And I hope that something that is said, something that you read, something that you ponder about later this week just motivates you to make some changes, some pivots, some readjustments in, in your life. And so I'm really excited about kicking off this series. And you're probably wondering why, Pastor Trey, are you wearing this mask <laughs> right now? Well, it's because this is what a lot of us look like right now. <laughs> uh, whenever we go out in public, this is, this is all we see. And for many of us, we're glad to have put on this mask. We are happy to go out in public and just cover up this because it covers up the, the falsehoods. It covers, covers up those facial expressions that we have to fake, you know, that fake smile or, you know, just those fake facial expressions that make us look like we have it all together. Those facial expressions that just make us look like we're just living our best life. But truly on the inside, we're hurting. Truly on the inside, there are some toxic things going on and as long as we have this mask on, we don't have to release those toxins out into the public. But there comes a time, I'm here to tell you life words, there comes a time when you gotta take the mask off. And I know taking that mask off is hurtful, it's painful, it's difficult for many of you. Because you've lived with pains and hurts and disappointments and so many emotions of, of past issues and mistakes and hurts you've been carrying that on the inside and it's become toxic but I want to let you know something that when toxic things are, are just withheld and, 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 and just just remain on the inside of us for year after years after years eventually our body starts to reject those toxins our body begins to not function up to its proper standards. Organs don't work as good as they used to. The blood doesn't flow through the veins like it should. Things start to break down. So that's one reason why I'm so excited about this series that we're calling Detox. And I pray that through these next few weeks that you find some ways that you can detox, go through your own personal detox process to eliminate some things that have been remaining in you for so long that is causing contamination within either your body or your spirit. And so I wanna to start today, as we dig into this, we're gonna to talk today about getting a spiritual detox. But before we, we go in, in too deep, I wanna share with you the definition of the word detox to make sure we understand the definition. Uh, the definition of, a word, of the word detox says it's the removal of toxic su substances within a living organism. Now scientists will tell you that a living organism is our physical body or any other living thing or being, like a plant, like an like a animal or something like that. But I'm here to tell you, LifeWords family and friends, that we are triune beings. We are, we are not just our body, but you also are, are made up of a spirit. And it's your spirit that has that connection with God. That's what connects you to God. And you also have a soul. And your soul is comprised of, of, of all your emotions and, and feelings, how you respond to different situations and, and, and things. And then the third thing and the most temporary is our body, is our physical body. And for too many people, the focus ha on eliminating toxins has been only from our physical body. You know, if, if we have an addiction to drugs or alcohol, there's a detox process for those things. And, and that detox process, I, yes, it, I hear it's difficult and I hear it's painful, but there's also a billion dollar industry focused on just detox products. We could go to any health food store, any, any pharmacy, and we'll see the shelves lined up with different substances or, or products or supplements for, for detox, if you wanna lose weight, there's plenty of colon cleanses and fat burning detoxes uh, for that. If you have high blood pressure, um, there are detoxes for that. Um, even I saw on the shelf that if you have body odor, if you have body odor, there's a detox for that. 
Now, to, to me, I thought that, that you just need to take a shower. But <laughs> obviously, that, that there's something extra that, that people are selling and making millions off of that will detox you, you from having body odor. Okay, I'm not mad at it. <laughs> but, but, but for too long, many of us have been ignoring the toxins that are on our spirit that are in, within our soul. And so today I wanna to talk to you about those spiritual toxins that, that we have within us. Go with me now to 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter six, and we're gonna start at verse 14. It says this, it says, don't team up with those who are unbelievers. How can righteous be a partner with wickedness? How can light live with darkness? What harmony can there be between Christ and the devil? How can a believer be a partner with an unbeliever? And what union can there be between God's temple and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. And as God said, I will live in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from um, unbelievers and separate yourselves from them, says the Lord. Don't touch their filthy things and I will welcome you. And I will be your father and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. So what I want you to understand from this, from this scripture is what Paul is saying. He's not telling us, hey, I need you to just eliminate yourselves from the world. I don't need you uh, co-mingling or working with or talking to anyone who's not a believer. That is not what he's saying here, but what he is saying is this. I need you to be careful who you bring into your inner circle. I need you to be careful who you give access to your life. I need you to be careful who you allow to touch you. I need you to be careful who you allow to give you advice. I need you to be careful who you allow to teach you things. I need you to be careful, my son, my daughter, on who you allow in your inner circle. Who you, are you giving access to? And being here in Sacramento, where, where most of us live, you know, here is the state capital, so there are many, many government workers that live right here within the city with us. And any government worker, if there's one watching, I'm sure when I say this, that they'll nod their head in agreement. But any government worker will tell you that not everyone has the same level of access. There are security levels to where if, if, if your job is on this level, you may not have the access to someone on this level. Not everyone in, with the, who works at the state capitol has access to the governor. Not everyone has access to the state legislators. Not everyone has the same level of security or IT access. And so if, if, that, if that's how our government systems work, if that's how on our jobs, how, how, how security access works, then maybe it should work the same way for our spiritual lives. Not everyone should have A1 classified access into our personal lives. And so I want to, to continue on, on, on to this story. If, if we just turn the page to Chapter 7 in, in 2 Corinthians, this story continues, this, this subject matter continues. Paul continues it uh, in, in verse 1 of chapter 7. He says, since we have these promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves from everything, <laughs> everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence to God. You see, Paul is basically telling us, in essence, folks, that we need a spiritual detox, that we just need to cleanse some things on the inside of us, not just things that contaminate our physical body, but also from the things that contaminate our spirit and our soul. He said it clearly. He said, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates our body and spirit. And some of us have some things that, are, that have just been lying within us for years and maybe even generations that have been contaminated in our spirit. And we haven't went through a detoxification process to release those things. Yeah, we may have stood up one day and confessed that we believe and we accept salvation through Jesus Christ. We may have even been baptized, but somehow we still didn't release some of the toxins that we've been carrying, some of us since, chi since childhood. 
And so today I want to talk to you about those spiritual detoxifications, that spiritual detox process that, that, that we all must go through. And you're probably ask, asking, Pastor Trey, how do you know I need one of these? How do you know I need a spiritual detox? You don't know my life. I, I, I look like and I walk like and I talk like everything is all good. So how do you know I need a spiritual detox? Well, I want you to, I want you to listen to, to what happens in Psalm 13. Watch this in Psalm 13. We're going to read Psalm 13, verse 2. And it says this, it says, how long? Must I wrestle with my thoughts and every day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Now, I want you to be honest. I want you to be completely honest. It's just me and you and maybe your family's around you. But right now, I just want you to be completely honest with yourself. I want you to raise your hand. I want you to raise your hand and don't worry. We're not we're not in a in a physical church, so no one's looking. Maybe your 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 spouse or your children, or maybe you're just watching alone right now. So don't be afraid to raise your hand. But raise your hand. But how many of us have thoughts that we're wrestling with? How many of us have thoughts that we're just that we just continue to wrestle with day after day, week after week, year after year? How many of us uh, are feeling some type of sorrow or regret from something that happened in our past? Whether it's something that you did, something that you feel responsible for. How many of us are, 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 are carrying regret and sorrow for those things? How many of us are feeling, feeling like we're making decisions that prevent us from living a victorious life? You may, you may be on this Christian walk, but somehow you just keep on making these decisions or you keep on making these same mistakes and wondering how and when will I ever get over this problem? How and when will I ever do better? How and when will I ever make the right decisions, the decisions that God wants me to make? Now, I'll be honest. I'm there with you. I, I can raise my hand to some of these things. There, there's thoughts that I wrestle with. You know, there, there's some feelings of sorrow and regret that I, I'm still trying to get over from from years past. And there's also, you know, just some things, some decisions that I made in the past that still haunt me to this day and I'm still trying to release myself from. So I just want you to know that you're not alone. We all are in, in this predicament as, as David wrote in, in the Psalms that, you know, we're just saying to ourselves, how long must I wrestle with my thoughts? You know, how long will these thoughts keep me up at night? How much longer do I have to deal with the pain of my past? And if you raise your hand, I want you to let, let you know that you're in need of a, a spiritual detox. And me too, me too. So what, what, what is it that we, what is it that we do about this? How do we go through this detoxification process? Well, go with me. I'm going to help you out right now. Go with me to Romans chapter eight, Romans chapter eight. We're going to read verse five through 13. But before we read it, before we read it, I want to encourage you to go back one chapter in, in your spare time and read chapter seven of Romans. I, w I want you to read it because it's Paul describing his own wrestling match. See, you see, Paul didn't just all have it together. Even after he accepted and, and believed, he still wrestled with some things internally. You know, and, and we hear in, in, in chapter seven, we actually hear him talk about his past pain. He, we hear him talk about how he feels about himself. And he ends chapter seven by, call, by saying to himself, oh, what a wretched man I am. See, you see that he that goes back to a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about some of the lies that we believe about God. You see, Paul was believing some of the, these lies that people had told him about himself, about him being wretched, about, you know, before he became Paul, he was Saul and killing, persecuting Christians. And so he carried all that pain, all that guilt with him into his walk with Christ. And so he all, constantly just started, you know, just downplaying himself and, and not believing in himself. And he ended chapter seven, like I said, by saying he was wretched. Here's a guy who wrote, <laughs> here's a guy who wrote two thirds of the New Testament and was planting churches all over the Middle East and on all the way up into Europe. This is the ultimate pastor. But yet and still he struggled and wrestled with his thoughts. So I want you to read chapter seven and, 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 and go through that in your spare time. But in chapter eight, starting at verse five, let's read this together. It says those who live according to the flesh have their minds 
set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance to the spirit have their minds set on what the spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. Verse seven, the mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. Verse nine, you, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but you are in the realm of the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. Verse 10, but if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. Verse 12, therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation. I want you to remember that word. We have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. Is that powerful? So if we go back uh, in, in, in verse 11, where, where it, it says, he who raised God will also give you life to your mortal bodies. And then verse 12, it says, therefore, dear brothers and sisters, we have an obligation. We have a requirement. We have a duty. We have a duty to live according to the spirit. So that means we have a duty to go through a detoxification process. That means we have a duty to get rid of things, all the pain, the hurt, the toxins, the contaminations in our in our spirit, man, and, and release those things so that we can truly live according to God's law and according to God's spirit. I want you to go through your life and find those areas of contamination. I want you to confine that area. Once you find that, that area of contamination, I want you to confine it. If, if, if you ever looked at when there was either a, a oil spill in the ocean or you know a, a gas leak or something like that, what happens is they end up putting a barrier around the contaminated area so that it does not spread, so that no one else or nothing else or no other part of the ocean becomes contaminated. So they put a barrier around it. So what I want you to do, I want you to put a barrier around that contaminated area in your spirit. Now for everyone, it's gonna be different. What, 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 what contaminates you may not contaminate me and vice versa. And that contamination process, that, that containing process, pr placing that barrier, it may be painful. But what it, do, what it does, it separates the healthy part of your spirit. It separates that from being contaminated by this one little small un unhealthy area. And some of us may have forgotten how good it feels to, to live life to the fullest, how good it feels to be uncontaminated because we've been contaminated for so long that we forgot. <sighs> This feels good to be pain free. This feels good to be stress free. This feels good to be spiritually healthy and not contaminated by the, the issues and the pains of my past. So I want to present to you today life words a challenge. Not a long challenge. I know sometimes we do like a 21 day fast or something like that, or some of us even did 40 days fasting and something like that. But I want, to, I want you to, to do this challenge for me. I want you to do a six day detox. A six day spiritual detox. And so I'm going to give you some steps in order to do that. But in this challenge, you're going to starve your spirit from the things that contaminate it. But at the same time, you're going to feed it the things that nourish it at the same time. So we're going to talk about really fast. We're going to talk about how to starve your spirit. And, and, and so by starving our spirit, that means we're starving those toxins. We're not feeding those toxins. And when those toxins begin to starve, they begin to become, they begin to be eliminated. And so what are those toxins that we need to starve? Well, the first one, the first toxin that we need to starve is the toxin of doubt. You see, doubt is believing what the world thinks about things or what the world thinks about you. 
And so doubt pulls us away from the reality of God into the hypothesis of him. I want you to get that. Doubt pulls you away from the reality, what you know to be true about God, and it, it brings you into a point where you're just thinking. You're just thinking about him. You're just, you know, ha having observations of him, but there's no faith. There's no knowing that you know that you know that you know because doubt has played a role. And so I want you to make this statement. I want you to say this every day for the next six days. I want you to say that I will trust what God says. No matter how much doubt uh, tries to play a role, how, how much society will tell you that, well, that's not real. That couldn't have happened. Oh, no, no, no. That, that's, that's just somebody wrote that, and, but it was not God inspired. I want you to tell yourself daily for the next six days, I will trust what God says. I will not trust what I say. I won't trust what I think. I won't trust what my neighbor says or thinks. I'm going to trust what God says. In Proverbs 3, 3, chapter 5, and then this is probably a popular scripture that we probably uh, learned since we were children. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. That's what we got to get to. We got to get down to the basics of that, of just trusting God, no matter what our understanding, no matter what we read in a textbook, no matter what a professor may have taught us. We have to get to a point to where we're trusting God and God alone. I want to talk to you about the second toxin that we must starve, and it's the toxin of negativity. This is a big one. We have to starve that toxin of negativity. Negativity can pollute your spirit. Almost like if, if, if you ever went, uh, well, right here in Northern California, over the past several weeks, our air has been polluted by smoke. You go outside and you couldn't see blue skies. The, the sky was a was a, a light brown color and, and it, our, our, our air that we breathed was just polluted and ashes were just blowing all over and, and just covering our cars and everything outdoors. Just everything was gray for, for a few days because our area, our world was polluted and negativity, negative things do that to our spirit. But I want you to I want you to starve that spirit, that, that, that toxin of negativity this week by making this statement as well for the, for the next six days. That you will think what God thinks. I want you to get that. I want you to think what God thinks. What does God think about you? What does God think about what we're dealing with in the world today? And I want you to think the same way. Go with me really fast to Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3, uh, it says this. It says, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. You see, when we think what God thinks, when we have his mind, when we trust him and, and not ourselves, he will keep us in perfect peace. We won't be affected by what, what happens from the White House. We won't be affected by what happens at the Capitol. We won't be affected by what's happening between Black Lives Matter and police. We won't be affected by the things that are happening in our, in our, uh, between, in, within our relationships because God has given us a sense of perfect peace. That doesn't mean that we're ignoring those things. That doesn't mean that we don't care. But God gives us a peace that passes all understanding. And so I want you to think about that and I want you to make sure that you just make that declaration that I will think what God thinks. And I want to give you a second one that goes with ne negativity because ne negativity is so such a big thing uh, with, with all of us, especially now in the times that we're living in. I want to give you a second one. I want you to give you this second declaration with negativity and that you will say what God says. Repeat that that this week that I will say what God says. Ephesians 4.29 says, don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. Are you going to say what God says? Or are you going to say what your, your inner, inner man is telling you to say? When that when that person uh, who doesn't agree with you uh, c comes back at you or, or what they call today, when they clap back at you, are you going to cuss them out because that's what you want to do? Or are you going to say what God says in that situation? 
When you look at what the president is doing or what or what Congress is doing and, 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 and your your inner self really is thinking some horrible things. Are you going to let those things come out or are you going to say what God says in those situations? And so the last thing I want to uh, uh, about starving, uh, starving your, 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 your toxins. The last one is probably the most the, the one that you've been waiting on because it's the most well known. And that's the toxin of sin. The toxin of sin, the, the Bible, but I want you to understand that sometimes we, we, we misunderstand or, or misinterpret this word sin, but the biblical definition of the word sin simply means to miss the mark. It means to miss the mark. So it's fitting that the proper response to sin is to repent because the word repent means, means to turn around or to change your direction. So I'm going to give you this analogy. So if sin means to miss the mark, and if you're like me every four years, I'm so sad that this year we didn't have the Olympics, so I'm so looking forward to next year with the Olympics coming back. But I love watching the Olympics. I watch events that, and sports that I've never even seen before. And one of them that I like to watch is archery. And so you see these masterful uh, people you know, with, with their bow and arrow, they pull their bow and arrow back and sometimes the wind is blowing, but they're still hitting their mark. But sometimes the wind may shift while they're releasing their arrow. And when they release their arrow while the wind's blowing, the arrow may start straight, but it, all of a sudden it starts to make a curve. And when it makes that curve, all of a sudden it doesn't hit their mark. They miss their mark, and so what happens is they repent, or in, in, in the archery world, they readjust. They make an adjustment to the win. And so maybe in your life, you got to look at sin as just missing the mark. They're, oh, I, I tried to do what God wants me to do, but I, I messed up. I, I made a mistake, so I, I missed the mark. Well, maybe it's, it's not to a point to where you, all is lost, but maybe you just need to readjust next time around. Maybe the wind was blowing and just threw you off track a little bit and you just need to readjust. Make the proper adjustment so that next time you do not miss the mark. That's what repentance is all about. You're making the adjustments to your life so that you don't miss the mark the next time around. And so after you have starved those toxins in your body, now we have to feed that spirit. Now we have to nourish that spirit. So we have to give it some prescription medicine. Amen. We have to give it some prescription medicine. So one of the things, the medications that we have to give it, the first one, we have to give it God's word. We have to give it God's word because we need to take some time to reprogram our minds to God's reality. Remember earlier I said that with doubt, all of a sudden we've gone from God's reality to an, a hypothesis. So now we got to take back God's word. We have to dig back into it so that we can make God a reality in our lives again. So for the next six weeks, instead of relying on insight from TV, relying on insight from cable news networks, or relying on insight from social media, I want you to get revelation from God's word for the next six weeks. Psalms chapter one, verse two, one and two says, happy are those who reject the advice of evil men. Instead, they find their joy in obeying the law of the Lord and they study it day and night. You want to find your joy again? You want to find your peace again? Study this word. I want you, I want to, when you dig into God's word, I want you to find you a, a reading plan. If, if you have the Bible app, the Version Bible app on, on your phone or on your tablet, make sure that you find a reading plan today. A six day, seven day reading plan and just dig into God's word for the next seven days and watch what it does for you. The second prescription and we're wrapping up the second prescription I want to give you is the prescription of worship for the next for the next six days. I want you to tune out any type of secular music. Now, I'm not saying secular music is wrong. I love me some R&B. I love me some hip hop. You know, I even love country. <laughs> but for the next six days. I want you to put your I want you to put your spirit in a mode of worship. I want you to set the atmosphere no matter where you are, whether you're in your car, in your home or at work. Set the atmosphere for worship. You see, because music is emotional. 
As a former athlete, I would always have my headphones on before a game, and I would listen to certain songs that would just get me fired up. That's why it, it, when we watch basketball or football and, they, and we see the, the athletes go from their car into the arena, you see them with headphones on because they're listening to some type of music that's going to get them in the mood to battle, in the mood to, 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 to win. And so what I want you to do, I want to, you to make sure that you understand that music is emotional, but I want you to make sure that you're listening to music that gets you in the mood for worship. I want you to get, get some music that will get you into, into the mood of releasing toxins from your spirit. And so the la last one, the last prescription that you got to give to your spirit, of course, is prayer. It's prayer. Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles uh, chapter seven, verse 14. If you were with us uh, this week, th this week at, uh, at first Wednesday, you probably heard us mention it. But I want to read this again in, in the message translation. It says, if my people, my God defined people respond by humbling themselves, praying, seeking my presence and turning their backs on their wicked ways, I will be ready for you. I will listen from heaven, forgive their sins, and restore their land to health. What is it, what is it that we're needing right now? Do we, we really could use a restoration of this land to a, or a place of health. Well, maybe, it, maybe if, if we took some time to do exactly what it says in 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If we, the God-defined people, Respond by humbling ourselves, praying and seeking his presence, seeking his presence, not only uh, when we first wake up in the morning, but seeking his presence when we're on our way to our job, seeking his presence while we're at our jobs, seeking his presence in the presence of our friends, seeking his presence in the presence of our enemies. And all of a sudden we will have the restoration that we need, not only for our land, but for our spirits as well. And so as I conclude today, I wanna, I hope that you take me up on this six day challenge. But more than that, I wanna I want, want do something a little different. You know, we always end by inviting you to either receive Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, or if you need prayer to let us know, or give you the invitation to be a part of Life Word Church. But we're gonna do something a little different today. We're gonna to take a moment and we're gonna ask ourselves a question. We're, no, as a matter of fact, we're going to ask the Holy Spirit a question and we're going to do this together. And so for the next minute, I just want you to repeat this question and say it loudly so that you can hear it as well. I want you to ask the question, Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me? I want you to ask that question because maybe we've been so consumed by trying to heal from our toxins that we haven't really heard from the Holy Spirit about how we address the toxins in our lives. We've been trying to cope with physical medicines. We've been trying to, you know, heal ourselves by going to counseling or, you know, maybe reading Oprah's book club or whatever. We've done all of those things, but maybe we just need at this moment just to hear from the Holy Spirit. And so for this next minute, let's do it together. Just keep repeating to yourself, Holy Spirit, what are you trying to say to me? Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me right now? Let's take a moment and do that. Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me? What is it about my life that needs to be cleaned? What are the toxins in my spirit that needs to go through a detox process? What are those pains? What are those hurts? What are those things about my, my, my personality that just needs some adjustments? What are those things about me that I've just dealt with and said it just is what it is? What are those things that just needs to be released? What are those things about myself that allow me to continually to miss the mark? And what are those things that will help me readjust so that next time I don't miss the mark. Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me? Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. 
And if you ask that question today, my prayer is that you hear from the Holy Spirit this week. Throughout this six day challenge, my prayer is that you hear clearly from the Holy Spirit, whatever he's trying to say to you. And I pray that after these next six days, you come back here next week and you just fill our comment section up with testimonies, with praise reports, with just stories of how God has just shown himself real to you this week. I believe that he can do it. And he can do that for you starting today. I believe in you, but more than yet, God believes in you. God has not given up on you, so don't give up on yourself. Go through the process. This detox may be painful, it may be difficult, it may, it may expose some things that have been covered up for years and maybe even decades. But God is not a God who leaves you in the middle of the process. Trust God throughout this detox process. Trust him. Trust him as the process. Because he, the process, trusts you. So at this time, we're just going to wrap up and we're, we're just going to give you the invitation to, if you're willing and able to continue worship through giving, you can do so on our website. We're not going to take up a lot of time with it today because I don't want to interrupt what I believe is happening in your home right now. And so when the time, when you're ready, when the time comes, and if you're willing to give, you can go to our website lifewordschurch.com slash give give any amount that you're able to give lifewords family thank you so much for your continuous tithing and giving to lifewords we we are in a position to do some great and mighty things uh, this fall because of your giving so thank you so much thank you in advance for your giving today and may god be with you this week as you go through this spiritual detox process i'm here for you and if you need uh, any prayer this week, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. All you have to do is just text the word pray. One word. Text the word pray to 916-299-7999. We'll reach out to you. We'll send you a, a prayer request form. And we're going to pray for you. But more than that, we are also going to pray with you. We're going to pray with you through this process. And so we invite you to join us this coming Wednesday for Life Words Wednesday on Zoom, where we're going to talk a little bit more about this detox process. And we're going to pray some things out together. We're going to release some things and get some detoxification going on in our lives. So we invite you to join us this Wednesday for Life Words Wednesday. And then, of course, we invite you right back here for Life Words Online Worship Experience next Sunday at 10 o'clock. May God be with you this week. May he reveal himself in ways he has never done before in your life. May you see him clearly and may you hear him even clearer. God bless you.